this is part two of the water heating vo video. Uh, this is the board modifications that have to be done. Uh, I'm starting with this second because, uh, you know, these are the modifications you're going to have to make and if you're not comfortable with them, uh, you, you really shouldn't continue with it. I don't think they're too hard. I tried to make them to a minimum. And uh, this is the board. Uh, you can get it on eBay, any places. They sell from, you know, six dollars to, uh, you know, twenty-one dollars each. Most of them are all the same board. Uh, there are a few slight different variations of these, and you got to make sure there's an integrated circuit right here. It's an eight-pin. You have to get the eight-pin in order to follow these instructions. Uh, these FETs, uh, even though they say in the uh, listing that they're 75 N75 FETs, uh, that means they're 75 volt, 75 amp FETs. This is, you know, called a 300 watt inverter board. And they've actually gone to a 55 volt FET now on many of them. Uh, that's much, much better if you're using it as an inverter. But if you're going to be doing water heating, and you know, I suggest water heating from anywhere from 50 volts up to about 80 volts with this board. Uh, beyond that, you should really look at a different design. But uh, this, you know, if you order these, you should get at least uh, at least two, probably three. You know, if you can get them at a good price, because these are so damn handy. I mean, if you know, you can turn this into a linear current booster. So if uh, you wanted to make a, you know, a pond pump to circulate water, uh, this would work great for that. You can hold the panels at power point and uh, it, it becomes a linear current booster. You know, it puts out as much current as the motor will take. So uh, we'll start with the uh, modifications. I mean, remember, you need to get the one with the 8-pin chip on it. Uh, these are all the same. You know, I, maybe the designations are different, but the schematics are all very close. And if, you know, since you likely have to remove these FETs, you know, you may consider, you know, just getting a little perf board and uh, making all the, you know, the whole design, you know, s straight out. But, you know, this one, you get two heat sinks, you get two terminal strips, you get the uh, integrated circuit. And, uh, you know, a nice place to mount the parts. And when you're finished, it looks kind of nice. So, here we go. Now, there's two diodes. Uh, these are black with a, a white stripe on one end. Those have to be removed. Over in this corner, those two diodes are, you know, here and there. There's a capacitor. Looks like this. Designated C1, you have to pull out and there's a little capacitor over on the side which is C5 and this 10K resistor. You pull that out but you save it. It's right below the lamp. The uh, LED lamp you know is useful. I use it mostly as a center but uh, you know it's a little handy. So those are all the things you have to remove plus this black relay. Uh, you're going to start trying to pull this out, and you're going to say it's impossible. You know, it's down there kind of flat, and so if you can make, to get this thing popped up like a 32nd of an inch or 164th, you know, go to the other side. You can keep rocking them back and forth. I've done a bunch of them. If you frustrate easy, uh, you know, this is going to do it for you. But it will come out. So those two black diodes... We put those over here, where the resistor used to be. Now, the one closest to the heat sink, the uh, white band is facing down, and on the other one it's facing up. These are two diodes in series. You don't ever want to have this touch the uh, heat sink. If you put the diodes down low enough, it'll be very difficult for them to rock. You know, I suggest you know, putting some heat shrink tubing on it, or, or you can put a tape, some tape on this edge. But you remove the 10K resistor, 
you install the two black diodes, make sure the bands are right, and heat shrink it. Don't let it short to the heat sink or you will destroy the board. Now over in this power supply section, uh, you have to have the dropping resistor. Remember we removed C1, this is the negative side of wh where the capacitor was. This is the positive. So don't solder into the stripes, solder in to this uh, positive side. Now you can use a 10K or an 8.7K or two 4.7K resistors. Uh, I like this best because you can use half watt resistors and it's a good match. When you get down to uh, installing them, you want to leave a little space here so you can solder. I mean, I have this little thing up here. Uh, this was this was pulled out of some piece of equipment. The, the lead was kind of short. Most of the one watt resistors may have leads that are too big to fit in these holes, and rather than drill them out, you can just use the wire of of, uh, of a resistor or something to go down there, and you can attach on. Now. The capacitor is right next to that hole. You don't want to solder too close to the capacitor because you could burn off the insulation and if the wire touches the uh, capacitor body, which is aluminum, uh, it's not going to work. And here's the resistor I was talking about. This is a 10K resistor and it goes from this position over to this little hole over here, which was D1. Now we'll flip it over. Where the LED is, there's a little peninsula coming out that connects to one side of the LED. We want to cut it. This is the only trace you have to cut. And it's kind of far away from a lot of things, so it's not too dangerous. You can use a box cutter, uh, wiggle it back and forth, uh, side to side. You know, try and make a really good deep cut make sure that it's it's uh, actually cut through. You can use an ohmmeter. This is actually the uh, negative common for the board and this is where the two diodes are. You know, check it with an ohmmeter. Make sure it's uh, infinity and make sure on some lucky day that there isn't some little trace that can short over that. Now, there's a we need a 1K resistor. This is going to be a quarter watt, anything small. And that bridges across those two places. Now this is the transistor that shorts out the capacitor of the timing circuit. And uh, that's how we turn the system on and off. You know, I'd, I'd hate to see you all go out and buy new parts. You know, if you... Uh, if you can find any old electronics, you got an old VCR or something, you can get the TL431 out of that. You can get a lot of the resistors. You know, you could probably even get the pot if you if you looked hard enough. Now, a lot of resistors come E with the center C and the other side the B, the base. So this is what I've done here. Uh, connected the emitter here. This is the transistor face down and uh, the base goes over to the LED. Now some transistors are E, B, C, in which case, uh, you know, you, you, you use the uh, side and the center pin to connect on and uh, the, the wire would go to this uh, third lead, the collector. So you need to put some spaghetti over that so it doesn't short. Uh, you can do a dab of hot milk glue, whatever. Now, if you pull a, a transistor out, it'll say something like C1234. The C is a, a designa designation for 2SC. And you can look that up on the internet and it'll give you the pin out of the uh, transistor. Remember to note where the flat side is because uh, you know you hook it up backwards it's not going to work but just about any NPN transistor will work and 
you should be able to get that free. Again, we have the collector pin, and that goes over to pin 3 of the uh, IR2153. Now, this is the way you look at it on the, on the board. Pin 1 is always up. There's a, a notch on the IC, so that's the top of the IC, and then it goes clockwise. One, two, three. And you can see that it uh, comes down to this little island here. It's a nice place to solder to. You won't be bridging the IC. And you can verify that because on the other side there'll be this little tiny capacitor. Now the TL431 conveniently fits in three holes of where the relay was. So there'll be three holes down here, kind of in a row, and then there'll be one off in this top corner. This is where the heat sinks are. So you want to use this one, this one, and this one. Flat side here, pins just like that. The TL431 can be found in any VCR, old wall wart. You know, the older the better because uh, a lot of things have gone to surface mount and uh, you're not going to play too well with surface mount. But that's about it. Now, the capacitor we took out of here, we can use that over here for the filter. And what we have across this terminal is also the uh, part of the voltage divider resistor. I have two here because I didn't quite have the right value. I usually work in 60 volts and I was testing this for 50 and I needed to add a little extra resistance. I use a 300K resistor here and a 50K pot. I use this 300K because uh, <laughs> this has a uh, 2 kilovolt flashover and you want to use at least a half watt resistor here. The real reason is I got 6,000 of them so <laughs> that's what I use but a 270 would work you know anything down to a 240 uh, you'll have to change the values a little bit I'll talk about that in the next video but uh, this is what you have to do and if you feel comfortable doing that uh, I suggest you buy a couple of these you know you want to at least have two because you know you'll screw up I'm an old guy I put things in backwards everyone does it don't worry about it these are cheap and if actually learning something isn't worth six bucks to you then uh, you know I'm, I'm sad you know because this is this is something you can be really proud of if you build I mean, you know, maybe your mother will be impressed that you bought something off eBay and, you know, did a plug and play. But this is real electronics. It's it's hard to find anyone on uh, on YouTube actually talking about real electronics and solar, building stuff yourself. My whole shop is uh, stuff I've built, and uh, it works better than most of the commercial stuff because I've designed it for a dedicated system. But if you build this. You'll love how it works, and you'll build more of them. It's a neat little board. So uh, thanks for watching, and remember, no expense was made producing this video.